Hey guys, welcome back to this next part of our mouse interaction tutorial within Unreal Engine 4. Again, my name is Devin Cherry, so what we're going to go over, uh, we're going to just quickly recap what we did in the last tutorial. Uh, we basically set up the important blueprint structures for our game mode, our player pawn, and our player controller, so that in the end when we play in our scene, uh, we see our mouse and we have a stationary camera. Um, Later on, when we make the actual blueprints for our buttons, we'll see the whole mouse interaction come into play. Uh, but what we're going to do right now is set up our actual game mode buttons. We're going to import our textures, we're going to create the materials, and we're going to assign them to a static mesh. Uh, so if you don't remember what those objects look like, let me grab you this scene here. So it's these three buttons right here. So we're going to make the content for those three buttons. So what we need to do first is go into our content browser. Uh, luckily in the last tutorial we created our folders. So we're going to start in the textures folder. We're going to right click. Let's go to import. And uh, you guys should be able to download um, my mouse interaction texture content folder. It's going to have four textures in it. It's going to have the classic mode name text. It's going to have uh, the time trial name text. It's going to have the waves mode text. But it's also going to have the dynamic circle. Uh, background of it. So we're just going to select all of these guys. And once they're in, uh, they'll have these little asterisks on them. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and hit Control S to save. And I'm not going to go over how I made these uh, textures, but all it really requires is you go into any kind of photo editing program. I use Photoshop. And you basically create an alpha mask here. So this one says classic mode, this says time trials, and this one says waves. And this one's a dynamic circle. You can't see it because of the coloring, but it's there. Obviously, it's going to be there for you. Um, but now that we got the textures in, this is where we can actually start working on the materials. So let's go into our material folder. So right-click, create material. And we're going to call this MAT, so material. And then classic mode underscore button. With that created, let's double-click it. And this is the material editor. It has a lot of components here. You have your palette, which has every single kind of node that exists within uh, the material editor. You have your main material hub that requires inputs to actually give you a visualization of your object. And then we have nodes that we're going to create over time during this tutorial to basically get the effect that we want. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is first select the main material HUD here. And over here on the left, there's an option for details under the material. One's going to say blend mode. We're going to change that from opaque to translucent. Uh, that way we're going to have the material have the ability to be transparent. Um, and the last thing we're going to do, instead of it having a sphere as the default kind of display of the material, we're going to change it to a plane. Because uh, in the end, the uh, materials are going to be applied to planes, so we want to use that as the point of reference. So now that we have that going, let's go ahead and begin. What we're going to start with here is a vector parameter. Now a vector parameter basically gives us the ability to add color uh, to an object. I'm going to name this classic mode button color. And on the default values here you have your RGBA values, so that's red, green, blue, and then the alpha channel. <clears throat> and we're just going to make this a solid red color, so we're going to just change the R to 1. And if we were to just plug this into the base color, you'll just see a red plane. But let's disconnect that. And what we need to do cre to create now is a scalar parameter. We're going to name this classic mode button intensity. And we're going to set its default value over here to 2. And what a scalar parameter is, it just gives us a single float value that we can change within our blueprint. Uh, these names and these parameters are going to be affected in our blueprints when we start actually making them. Because if you remember in the demonstration, when we hover over the actual objects, you know, it got brighter. The emissive got more intensified. And this is what we're going to be using to control that. So now that we have both of these set up, we can hold down the M key and left click to create a multiply node. We're going to multiply all those colors by the two. And just to show you more of what it does, let's just plug this into... Uh, the base color. So I believe, I'm not too sure if it would be visible, but let's change this to 5. Does it get more red? No. 
So the, what we can do instead is plug it into the emissive color. So if we change the 5 to a 10, it's going to be really bright. And if we change it to 100, it's going to be even more bright than that. So that's what that parameter controls, but we're going to leave it at 2. We're going to disconnect the multiply because we need to do more here. What we're going to do next is actually implement our textures into the material. Uh, so let's grab both the textures. Uh, first texture we're going to need, since we're messing with the classic mode button, we're going to grab the T underscore classic mode underscore text. Make sure that's selected in the content browser. And then in our material editor, we can just hold down the T key and left click, and it creates a texture sample using that texture. And we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do it for the T underscore dynamic underscore circle. So select that in our content browser. Hold down the T key and left click. Whoops, that was the R key. And now we have both our texture samples. We have our dynamic circle, and then we have our text. So the last thing we need to create here is another scalar parameter. So we can just copy and paste that with Control C, Control V. Let's change the name of it to Classic Mode Button Text Intensity. And now what we need to do here, we're going to do another multiply. So again, we can just hold down the M key and left click, or we can just copy and paste that one there. We're going to multiply the alpha channel of our text. Give me a moment here, switch things around. So the alpha channel of our classic mode text, and everything's alphaed out so you just see the text. And we're going to multiply that by the scalar parameter we just made. And then what we need to do now is create an add node. So we can hold down the letter A as an alpha, and then left click for the add. And we're going to add both alpha channels of our two textures. So the alpha channel of our dynamic circle and the alpha channel of our texts. So we're going to add them together. And now what we can do here is just throw this into the opacity. And as you can see, we have the alpha out of the word classic mode, and then we have the circle surrounding it. And now what we need to do uh, is do an, we got to do another multiply and another add. So what we need to do here is grab the multiply. Uh, let's hold down M and left click again. Uh, we're going to multiply the alpha channel of the dynamic circle. Multiply that by the color. Uh, so the result of the color and the classic mode intensity. And now all we have to do at this point is add together the classic mode text and the resulting of this multiply. So let's grab and add. And let's put these together. And then we need to just put this into the base color and emissive color properties. So we put it into the base color and we get that coloring. And then when we go into emissive color, we have a kind of a, like make a, a brighter, more intensified uh, mesh, or material, I should say. And then if we change the classic mode button intensity, it will change the red color. It will make it more bright. So we've changed that to 5. We're seeing that the red is standing out more. If we make it 20, again, we'll see it more intensified. And if we go down to classic mode button text intensity, we can change that to 10. And we'll just see the words classic mode just get brighter. And we're not going to multiply any colors for the classic mode text. We actually want it to stay at that white color just to make it easy for us. Uh, but the ending result classic mode button, that's what it's going to look like once it's applied to a plane. So that's exactly what we want. So that's how we do that material. So let's hit save. And luckily all our materials are structurally the same. So all we really need to do is duplicate this material, change some of the names of the parameters, and change the colors, and resave it. So let's grab the mat underscore classic mode underscore button. Let's hit control W. There we go. Let's do mat underscore, we'll do time trials next. So mat underscore time trials underscore button. Double click on that to open it up. And we have all the same parameters here. Uh, so the first thing we're going to change is this vector parameter. Let's first change the name of it. Uh, instead of calling it classic mode button color, we're going to call it time trials button color. 
And we're also going to change its color from red to blue. So let's make the R 0 and make the B value 1. And now we'll change the name of this scalar parameter. I'll change it to time trials button intensity. And now we need to change the texture sample that it's using, because right now it's using the classic mode text. So let's go back into our content browser, back into our textures folder. Let's left click on the time trial text. And then in the details pan panel, once we have this texture sample uh, highlighted, uh, we can change the texture here by just hitting the uh, left directional arrow, and it'll update to the new one. And then all we have to do now is change the name of the second scalar parameter. So we'll call it time trials button text intensity. And everything else can stay the same. So let's save that. We basically got to do that one more time, but for our waves mode button. So once this saves, we'll move forward with that. So let's go back into our materials folder. Let's grab the mat underscore time trials. Hit control W to duplicate. We'll call this mat underscore waves mode underscore button. Double click on that. Select the plane option here at the top. Change the name of time trials button color to waves mode button color. And this one's going to be green. So we'll change that. We'll make the blue value zero. And we'll make the green value 1. Name, uh, change the name of the time trials button intensity to waves mode button intensity. Now we need to update the text texture here. So back in our textures, we have the T underscore waves text. Select that in our content browser, update it here in the texture sample. And then we just got to rename this final scalar parameter. So we'll change it to waves mode button text intensity. And there we have it. So let's save that. And all we have left to do at this point is uh, create our static meshes and apply those meshes uh, with these materials. So luckily in the starter content, there's a folder here. And under shapes, I believe it's at, uh, we have a shape underscore plane. So let's left click, drag, and drop that into our static meshes folder. And once we drop it, it's going to ask if we want to move it or if we want to copy it. Uh, so we're going to copy it. And then in our static meshes folder, uh, let's hit F2 with the object selected. It'll allow us to rename it. And we're going to name this one SM underscore classic mode underscore button. And we're going to hit uh, Control W. We're going to name the second one SM Time Trials button. Hit Control S to save. And then we're going to do Control W one last time to do SM underscore waves mode. Oops. Underscore button. So now we have our three material, I'm sorry, three static meshes. And now we just need to apply the materials here. So we'll start with the classic mode. So double click that to open up the static mesh editor. And let's go into our materials folder, select the mat underscore classic mode underscore button. And with that highlighted, we just need to go into the LOD section of the details panel that has the element zero for materials right here. And we're just going to hit this arrow to apply our material. And there we have it, just like we saw in the actual material editor. So let's save that. And we basically just need to do that for the remaining two. So let's go into the time trials grab the material for that and update its material here in the details panel. So there's our time trials. And last but not least mode. So let's go into the materials folder here, get the waves mode and apply it. And there we have it. So there we go. We have all those materials applied. We have our static meshes created. Um, we're not going to throw the static meshes into our scene at all. We're actually going to need to implement that into our blueprints, which will be the next tutorial. Uh, so I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.